Okay, so this is my video on the Marion St. Quentin 1, what upgrades I made, what I think of the bike, a general overview of what I've done with the bike so far. I'm doing this video because a few people asked me to do this video. There are other videos about this bike on my channel, but this is going to be the most comprehensive. Right, so this is the Marion St. Quentin 1, it's about two months old, three months old, something like that. I can't remember exactly when I've got it. They're 649 to buy, which is a pretty good price. You get a slack, super slack head angle, 65 degree head angle, so it means the bike goes downhill much, much better and it feels more confident in jumping and it's just better overall for handling. I got this thing because I basically I thought it was listed as boost. Okay, this first thing it was listed as boost, so I was thinking the frame is going to be as good as this in Quentin 2 and 3 frame for the same price. It's not, not. I will say that much. It's still a good bike, but it's not that level. We have a Boost 141 spacing rear axle on here, but it still takes a quick release. So it's 141 instead of 135. That makes replacing these wheels a bit of a pain, although it can be done. Anyway, that aside, it is a bloody good bike. Um, things I have changed on this thing. The suspension forks that came with it for that sort of price, the 649 price point, were the SR Suntour XCR. And uh, my particular ones, I think I got a bad batch because they were they were stuck. They were very stiff. Like even with a 20 stone rider on it, my mate who's 20 stone, not fat, just huge, couldn't barely move them. So I replaced them with these Suntour Arons, which I happen to have uh, kicking about from another project. The um, thing with the standard forks is there's a tape. There's not a tapered steer standard. The fork is a straight steer that comes with the bike running in an adapter so it will run in a tapered frame. Yeah, say that trying to say in that three times fast. I did make a video about that so you can see the other video on that subject, but basically there's an adapter to run a straight steer fork in the frame already. So you could run a straight steer fork if you happen to come across one cheap. Just remember it's got to be a boost spacing on the front because the front is a 110 spacing standard boost spacing by 15 mm axle. Um, yeah not 20 millimeter 15 millimeter remember that as well although most are 15 mil these days um, so if you're going for a tapered fork you need to upgrade the headset to an fsa number 57e or similar or if you have access to a lathe make an adapter like i did because i was high ass anyway um basically um the upgrade other upgrades i made were the carbon fiber spacers because you know save 20 grams on your carbon spacers and all that Berg Tech stem because it's bling, race face Chester bars because they they were on sale at the time and uh, you know I was in a hurry for a new set of handlebars. Got the DMR Def grips on here. I put the zoom brakes on for a laugh originally as a YouTube video. I kind of uh, lost a bet and bought some for an e-bike ages, uh, ages ago, and the stopping power is absolutely superb. So I've left them on here. They work really, really well, although I don't match it if you want to buy they look kind of weird, but hey-ho, I will be changing them to something else soon, don't worry, just because that red really doesn't go. I have a bottle cage, because hey, retro. Standard transmission with a new chain and a new cassette. I used WD-40 chain lube, and it's the bike stuff, and I think something was wrong with it, because it would just turn, instead of being like normal chain lube, it turned into almost like a cement cemented the rollers on the chain, see these roller parts that are supposed to move, they didn't move, and it wore down the cassette very, very quickly as it atta atta attached sand and other crud to it, so that stuff is horrible, so I've replaced the chain and the cassette. The upper parts are fine, the bottom bracket is fine so far, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty solid drivetrain, no worries. Tyres are really grippy, with a hand stamp for tyres of course, absolutely fantastic, no problems with those. The only thing I haven't replaced is actually the thing I don't like the most, this seat clamp. I will be getting a dropper post for this, but I, ha I had some lying around and I thought, oh, that'll be 38.1 or whatever, I didn't check to make sure. It's these are 30.6 I think it is. I will put it in the description, but I'm pretty sure it's 30.6 needs for this bike. So I don't have one that fits at the moment, so I have to get one for it. And that standard seat clamp, by the way, is terrible. Yeah, Marion, seriously, this thing is awful. You need to use an Allen key for it. It really, if you don't use an Allen key and tighten it right up, the seat post wiggles down as you pedal, so it's not fun. But apart from that, absolutely fantastic. For the price point, you can't beat this thing. It's way better than things like the Collective C100 and things like that. It's a proper mountain bike, proper modern mountain bike geometry. 
frame is all reinforced down here this is a machined piece welded to the piece of tube down here everything's reinforced on this thing and it's pretty much the best bike for the price you can buy I mean there is a cube I've got as well which was the same year I got cheap from the uh, police auction someone tried to shoplift it and this thing is massively better than that even though it's the same price as this so it's definitely a brilliant upgrade platform as well I've left most of the parts on there in the future I plan to go 10 speed on it but for now I'm leaving it 9 I've got 10 speed lying around really I should go, go 10 speed but hey ho time and all that I'd also need to face this um, we wouldn't need to, but it's best to face this bottom bracket if you're going 10 speed or external bearings because um, there's paint on there and you want to get that paint off so the new bearings sit flat and perpendicular to each other without any, um, you know what I mean, they'll be parallel. So you need to face it really. So yeah, apart from that, bloody good bike. Really enjoyed it. And that concludes this video.